What was the worst year in Star Wars history? And no, I'm not talking about that one year that saw The Last Jedi in Solo. That was just a joke. I'm sorry. But no, for real. In universe, what was the one year period where things were just awful? And we'll take this from a good guy's perspective. When did things really, really fall apart? When did our heroes or the heroes of the era just get smacked around so much that it made the one year period just a little bit different than any time else. And I mean, there are good single events which could qualify for this, the destruction of Hosnian Prime, and really the first days of the First Order conflict from Star Wars canon, for example, or even the purge of the Jedi, the destruction of Alderaan, and associated rebel losses. I think you get the idea. However, there was a period of one to two years in Star Wars Legends where the Rebel Alliance, then the New Republic actually, faced an ungodly amount of threats of very, very serious magnitude. Did they win? Well, yeah, they kind of always do, but it was probably the single most taxing period, at least for the good guys in Star Wars history. Let's go to nine years after the Battle of Yavin. I'll paint the picture. The New Republic has finally captured Coruscant and has established a full government, not only allied with systems across the galaxy, but effectively governing. The New Republic has finally gotten many of the Imperial Remnant groups under control. The Empire itself is being diminished in territory, that is, until the re-emergence of Grand Admiral Thrawn. I'm not going to start my timing for a year here until six months or so into his campaign. We'll call it like nine and a half ABY. And at that point, Thrawn basically had full support of Imperial Remnant groups across the galaxy. He did something pretty interesting though. He left those commanders to take their own space and with a small fleet, waged war against the New Republic. This war was both a traditional one and a psychological one waged against the elites within the New Republic. The galaxy's faith in Admiral Akbar, Mon Mothma, and even Leia seriously wavered as Thrawn continued his psychological attacks through useful idiots like Borsk Failia. Through this campaign, Luke Skywalker is almost killed several times. The Katana fleet is seized by Thrawn and armed with tens of thousands of quickly produced Sparty clones. And many worlds would cede from the New Republic and join the Empire, impressed by Thrawn's tactical mastery. Although the New Republic would eventually defeat Thrawn at the Battle of Bilbringi, there were some serious scars across the galaxy starting to form. However, it wouldn't be long until the New Republic realized that the death of Thrawn certainly did not mean the death of the Empire. There were little skirmishes, most notably the Q-Trick campaign, but in 10 ABY, the New Republic would suffer, let's call it a setback, like they had never expected. After the New Republic's defeat of Admiral Krennel, there was a shocking unification of of the Empire. Imperial warlords from across the galaxy met within the Deep Core and launched a stunning and completely devastating blitz against the galaxy. One of their first stops was Coruscant, and they bombarded the energy shield with their combined fleet to the point where the planet fell and the New Republic was forced into exile. It was not just Coruscant, however, much of the core and the inner galaxy fell to the Empire. The New Republic essentially died with the Rebel Alliance being forced back into existence. And if you stretch the timeline here, when you consider that this happened less than a year after the Thrawn campaign, you'll see why I titled the video the way I did, but it would get far worse. It's eventually revealed that the Empire has reunified under the command of a reborn Emperor Palpatine. But just as things were looking up for the Empire, well, it got even worse for the galaxy. This was an event known as the Imperial Mutiny. The reunified Empire once again split up and began vicious infighting, which saw countless worlds caught within catastrophic infighting. I'm talking super star destroyers crashing onto planetary surfaces, torpedo spheres just going off and firing onto everything around them. The practical explanation for this was that different arms of the Empire were simply fighting for domination, but it's also been heavily suggested that this was Palpatine. Palpatine punishing the Empire for abandoning him after his supposed death and also trimming down the fat. But oh, things would get worse because Palpatine would unveil a series of new super weapons, including the World Devastators, which attacked the Fortress of the New Republic, Mon Calamari, the Eclipse Dreadnought armed with a powerful continent-cracking capital ship-destroying super laser, and the Galaxy Gun, which could annihilate planets from across the galaxy, although that part came a little later. On top of that all, Luke Skywalker had, temporarily at least, fallen to the dark side in an effort to destroy the Empire from 
within. Now, Luke would snap out of it. He would feed the New Republic the codes to defeat the world devastators. And this first form of Palpatine, well, first returned form, would also be defeated. But of course, this is the worst year of the New Republic's history. So Palpatine would return in another clone body. And it becomes fairly obvious that he can't die practically until his supply of clones runs out. At this point, Palpatine's galaxy gun is also firing. It can essentially wipe out a whole world from the stronghold of Biss. The new secret base of the Rebel Alliance, Pinnacle Base, is destroyed along with it, presumably a decent chunk of Rebel forces. As this is happening, and I'll just read this quote from the new Essential Chronology, the Emperor continued to launch his deadly projectiles, destroying unruly worlds and bringing the resistance to its knees. Within a short time, Palpatine had regained key territories in the inner and outer rim. The future of the New Republic looked bleak. Oh, also, there are more dark Jedi ever running around now. So, in a year, you basically have a Star Killer base like event. You have almost an Order 66 with the massive attack coming out of nowhere, Luke temporarily falling to the dark side, and that's alongside all of the nonsense associated with the Thrawn campaign. So much of what the New Republic worked for was wiped out in an instant. Now, in this darkness even, there would be some positives. As the chronology explains, with the New Republic destroyed, they were given the opportunity to create an even more effective form of government. I really want to talk about this in relation to the sequels and what will be episode 10, Ray's movie, because I think there's something to look at here. I'll just read directly. A fresh start allowed them to establish a new system of government. The Provisional Council and position of Chief Counselor had worked effectively in the past, but that system was now viewed as the government that had lost Coruscant to Palpatine. A new, more powerful single leader was desired, as well as a more clearly defined governmental hierarchy. Mon Mothma was elected Chief of State and President of the Senate. So, I think you can probably see what I'll be talking about in that video, and what you might be able to expect from the New Republic moving forward in Star Wars canon. But, there was also another bit of light in all that darkness. Well, three bits of light. And this does kind of expose that what I've been calling a year is more like two years. But, this period saw the birth of the three solo children. Jaina and Jason are born during the Thrawn trilogy, while Anakin is born during Dark Empire and nearly consumed by Palpatine. Not consumed, it's more like a spirit hopping. But in a way, I mean, that would also lead to some bad business. Jason, well, watch my videos on Legacy of the Force, he turned into a little fascist himself. And Anakin, of course, would have a tragic, tragic death during the Yuuzhan Vong War. Jaina turned out all right, although she kind of married an Imperial on a superstar Star Destroyer, also worth a discussion another day. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.